Hey, Josie with Queen My Pawn. Today I'm going to be talking about what function, domain, and range really mean. Teachers like to explain it in a, just like literally one sentence, which is good, but it doesn't get the point across. They like to say that func that domain is everything on the x-axis and range is everything on the y-axis. But if you try to ask someone to define what a domain is without using math terms, they'll be at a loss. They won't tell you what the basic concept of a domain is. And really, it's like being on the internet. Imagine you have Google Chrome open or Microsoft Edge open, and on the URL bar, you could put something like google.com. Well, that's a domain. That's why um, if you've ever tried to buy a website before, they have this thing called domains for sale and a domain is um, the name of a website and the range is everything on the website itself so google.com is the domain and when you press enter you get everything that is inside that website which is in this case google.com is a search bar so the range would be a search bar. Um, but if you have MSN as your domain, then the range would be a bunch of news. You get a bunch of um, different articles on what's going on in the world when you go to msn.com. So it's really the same thing in math. Teachers have been trying to say that um, like everything on the x-axis is a um, like this would be the domain. Um, for example, one and three. Map teachers would basically say, oh, this is part of the domain and that's part of the range. Um, but what they really don't um, explain is that it doesn't have to be that way. Like, um, you don't even have to have numbers in the domain. <laughs> like this could be Google and that could be MSN and Google gives you a search bar. So I wrote G and S short for Google search bar. The domain is the google.com and the range is everything on and inside google.com, which is a search bar. The domain is just the name itself. <clears throat> Then you have MSN, which gives you news. So you have MSN and then news. So that's really all that it is. Um, another way to explain it would be that the domain is one collection of objects and the range is another collection of objects. In my example, the domain is just um, the name of the website and the range is everything inside the website. In this case, we could pick something like, so we'll call it the, um, the domain, I'll write D for short, and the range is R. And let's say I have this point, um, we'll call it one. We'll call it the number one. So this is number one, and then this is number two, and this is number three, and if we multiply it by three, so all right, times three. So I multiply the numbers by three on the range, it'll be three, six, nine. One gets mapped to three, uh, two gets mapped to six, and three gets mapped to nine. And we would say that when we multiply the number by three, we call that the function. So. Um, that would be the actual function itself. The function is like a train and it takes a person from one stop to the other. In this case, this is stop number one and the train this time is the multiplication by three train. It takes you all the way to that stop, the number three stop. That's what that train did to you. Now, something cool is that one train cannot take you to two stops at the very same time. That 
like one person cannot be at two different places. So if you multiply one by three, you only get three. You can't also get six. That's like, that wouldn't be possible. And that also fits the definition of a function in math. That's what teachers say all the time. A function cannot have two different um, outcomes. Like Google.com, imagine if it wasn't just a search bar, it also took you to like, um, like putting Google.com in, it took you somewhere else like, um, I don't know, like a game website. Um, that would be illegal. You, you can't, like it would be undefined. And they, uh, that's actually a math term, undefined. So, um, but the cool thing is that you can have two people going to one stop at the same time, and that's possible. For example, you could define the train to be somewhere, something else, like, um, uh, let's say that we divide the number by itself. You could have this function be divided by itself. And in math, you could call it the, uh, hold on. You could call it the, um, I'm sure there's a mathematical function for it. Um, X divided by X. Where X is just the domain value. So one over one, that gives you one. Two over two, that gives you one. So they all get mapped to the same place. Three over three gives you one. As you can see, many people take the same train to get to the same place. That's, that's okay. And we would say that all of the domain is mapped onto that uh, value right there, number one. So that's that. <clears throat> um, and that's really all that it is. Domain and range and functions. Functions are just trains that take people from one place to another. That's really all they are. So if you actually try to put this in a mathematical perspective, like with graphs, you would see that's X, that's Y, one, two, three, one, two, three. If we have this function. Uh, it's just uh, read as x equals y. We're not doing anything except just setting them equal to each other. So it's really x times one. That's what happened. That's multiplying the same the number by one, which gives you the same number in the end. So one times one is one. Two times one is two. Three times one is three. And so you get a line like that. Um, so that's what the train did. It mapped uh, the number to itself. So it basically be like a useless train, really. Imagine that, a train that takes you to the same stop. Maybe it's a fun ride. You just ride the train until you get to the same stop again. That's possible. So that's really all that they are, and that's how you should think about them in mathematical terms. Function, domain, and range. It's just a train that takes you to one place, from another or from one place to another. And actually you can take the, the train back. So um, I'll discuss that in another video, taking the train um, back to your home stop in the next video. Uh, that will be called inverse functions. Spoiler alert. So make sure to subscribe to queenmypawn.com for more videos and click like and thanks for watching.